Hello and welcome to this new episode of Free Science 365. Today's challenge is guess the fastest ball challenge. Okay, so here's today's challenge. First, let's see these two balls, orange and green. And I'm putting these two on these two extremes of this uh, shape. And let's release them at the same time, okay? And let's see what happens. Okay. So what you see is both of them actually meet at the midpoint. And that's very natural. Well, you're keeping them both at the extremes. So, hmm. Now, the challenge is... If I keep this ball here, very near to the center, and this ball here, which ball, the green ball or the orange ball, which ball will reach the center first and that's the challenge all right the answer is both balls will reach the center at the same time doesn't matter uh, where they are on this curve they will always reach the center at the same time. Okay, let me demonstrate here. So again, we have two different colored balls. You can easily find them uh, in any stationery shop or supermarket. So, let's keep one of them here, the other one here, and release. And as you can see, uh, we'll do it in the slow motion as well. They meet at the center. You know what? Let's do in the slow mo. Now let's do the same challenge. But this time we have marbles. They are much more solid. They're not as bouncy as the rubber balls we had. And let's see what happens. So this time let's keep this one. Uh, so we have blue and white transparent marbles here. So let's keep the blue marble on this extreme. And let's keep the white one here. And we release at the same time. Ready and go. Again, the same time. Uh, let's do this in slow-mo so we used solid balls and rubber balls but and we use different you know positions on either sides of this curve but every time they both reach in the center at the same time why does that happen well if you remember in our last video we talked about isochronous curve and an isochronous curve is actually the curve that takes the minimum time from an upper point a to a lower point b uh, if you haven't watched that video please watch it here maybe <laughs> so what happens is this is the curve actually this is the curve that we took from point A to point B and which is the fastest uh, way path so this curve is called isochronous curve and uh, a lot of my students uh, and friends in the last video they talked with me and they said well you just showed it on computer screens as a graphic 
but can we actually make it? So yes, you can actually make an isochronous curve. Uh, we also call it uh, quite a mouthful actually. The brachistochron, sorry. <laughs> brachistochron, brachisto in Greek means shortest. So it's the shortest path. And uh, actually Michael from Resource has made a very good video. Uh, in the process of researching for this video, how to make this, I came across his video and it's really good actually. So if you want, please uh, have a watch. It's called Vsauce. The channel is Vsauce and it's an amazing, amazing channel. Anyway, let's come back to this curve. How to build, how to make isochronous curve. So let's see how we can make an isochronous or uh, pachistochronous curve. Okay, let's see what we need to make the isochronous curve. First thing that you need is some cardboard or some thick paper uh, which can actually sustain the weight of balls that you will be rolling over uh, on the isochronous curve. So, uh, what I did is I used the, the cardboards from the last experiment, do you remember? Yes, the shadow experiment. So I used the same cardboards, Motai Nai. <laughs> Hashtag Motai Nai. So I used the same cardboards uh, from that experiment uh, to minimize waste. So these are the cardboards. I, I used the, uh, the other two that were there. Uh, then you need a circle. Something uh, like a circle because you need to then trace the points on the cardboard. So uh, I cut out a circle from one of the cardboards actually. Then you need some tape to actually uh, connect fasten. So what I did is here is I connected uh, these things using the tape and of course scissors because once you uh, once you trace the isochronous curve you need to cut it and those are the things that you need. So first what you do is you uh, can make the curve like so. Uh, I will show you how to how to trace a curve uh, separately because it's easier said than done. Actually tracing the curve will be the uh, most difficult task. It took me four hours actually a bit more than four hours to build this baby and initially I was a little sad because I didn't leave much space here and so that leaves very space very little space for you know things to roll and that's why I chose uh, you know smaller balls and uh, even smaller marbles so so that it doesn't disturb their flow their roll uh, but if I could do it again I would leave a little bit of space down so be careful with that and yes four and a half hours or so to make this initially it was also curving it was also actually yeah going like this so I had to keep it in place and uh, I mm, glued or rather taped this extra uh, cardboard here so that it doesn't wobble much when the balls are rolling away so not a very good uh, piece I would say but it serves the purpose and uh, I was a little bit disappointed after four and a half hours uh, that it's actually tilting on the sides but luckily it worked so that was fantastic so now the main challenge how to make this curve so for that let's move on I'll show you how to do that and so that you can easily uh, understand it I'll show you on the whiteboard now one more thing before we move on to tracing the isochronous curve once you carve out these curves so I use this scissors the uh, non sharp side of the scissors to make the path smoother so to even out the rough edges after you cut I recommend if you have something that you can use it to make it more smoother for the balls to roll over that would be great as well so so that's all we need for the experiment and now let's move on 
to trace the isochronous curve. Let's see how to make an isochronous curve. Uh, in theory, it's very simple, but actually it took me about four hours and some to make the isochronous curve that we had uh, previously in the challenge. Now, how do we make one? It's very simple in theory, but it needs a lot of patience. So, let's get started. First of all, you need something that's circular in shape. So, what I have done is here, uh, is I have taken the cardboard from Guess the Shadow Challenge. Do you remember that? And I tried to use it to the hilt. So, I have used one of them, you know, the square shadow. I used one of them to make a circle. So, I made a circle. And if you look here carefully, what you see is I actually marked it. And this mark is very important. So, now, let's get started. What you need is, you need a place where the circle doesn't skid. And so what I have done here is, on the whiteboard, this is a magnetic uh, metal whiteboard, so magnets uh, can fit uh, properly there. And what, they, what these magnets do is, they make sure that our curve, uh, our circle, doesn't slide and it doesn't displace itself. So it's a very painstaking job. Uh, so you have to uh, be very diligent and do it slowly. But once you are done with the tracing of the curve, everything else is simple. Okay, so first, so here, as I said, mark it and now stop it here and for the, the, the circle to stop and not slide over, we use these magnets. Okay, now, again, let's move it a little bit. Yeah, it's a very painstaking job. You have to be very, very, very patient. Okay, let's move it further. And done. Yes! <sighs> okay, <laughs> my hands are a little tired, but I think we got the curve. And actually, yeah, over this area, the, uh, the cardboard actually moved over the curve, so it affected uh, the points, but we were lucky enough because there were some residue points remaining. So, this, my friends, Yes, this here. Now all you need is combine them. And for that, let's use the red pen. Red marker. And here is this beautiful, beautiful curve. Right. Yes. And this is an isochronous curve. So, this curve has three names. And I want to introduce all the three terms to you. The first one is isochron. The second one, the same thing is also called uh, tautochron. And the third and the most difficult name is Brachistochron. So, 
So, an isochronous curve has these three names, and what do they all mean? Okay, let's uh, quickly cover that as well. So, iso means equal, and chron, as you know in Greek, means time. Chronometer, all those things came from the Greek term of time, so equal time. And as we saw in the video, uh, in our challenge, yes, wherever you keep the balls, they will always meet in the middle. They will take the same time to reach the middle point. Uh, doesn't matter where you place them. Now, what does toto mean? So, or as in America, they call tata, <laughs> tata crown. Now, a toto crown, crown as you know, is time. And toto means same. And finally, let's look at the etymology of Rikistokron. Now this is quite a mouthful, so let's uh, break it down. Rikist and Kron. So Kron, as you know, is time. And Rikisto means shortest in Greek. So hence the name, because uh, in the previous uh, video, we showed that it takes the shortest time, do you remember we did this thing? And so this was a straight line, uh, this was vertical and horizontal with a small curve here, and this was an isochronous curve. So isochronous curve is also called a pachistochrome because it takes the shortest time among all the possible ways you can reach from point A to B. And so uh, that's why it has three different names, but they all mean the same curve. Okay, so this is how you make it. And after you make it, you can trace it on a tracing paper, put in a cardboard, cut it uh, the way I did, and you will have your own brachistochrome or isochrome, whatever you want to call it. So, that was today's video. Thank you for watching. And as always, please share, comment, and subscribe, and spread it as much as you can. And I will see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.